Yeah, my name is is uh, Steve Smith. Yeah. Okay. Galunya de. Okay, my my father was Oliver Smith, uh, um, and my mother was Elda Smith. Uh, she was a Smith before she was married, but my parents were not biologically related. He uh, um, used to hear all the time, get wood before school, get wood after school, get wood. A Saturday morning, get wood. A Sunday morning, get wood. And he thought I heard that so much. I thought my name was Get Wood. And um, so I, I, that made me think uh, that the younger generation uh, today, they they didn't, never had to go to cut wood. And I used to cut wood with all the old timers like Alec Hill, Alec B. And, and, um, and um, so I asked Frank Miller one time, I said, Frank, uh, how do you translate in the Mohawk the phrase, go get wood? And, and he said, it's jata goha. So the young people come today, sometimes in my shop, I get young people, university, high school students, and they want to know about old Indian, uh, you know, uh, the pottery and that. And, and I, I tell them, I said, there's this uh, game I want to teach you how to play it. Um, nobody plays it anymore. The younger generation don't know how to play it. And when I was young, I used to have to play it all the time. And, uh, I, I said, you heard of lacrosse and, and hockey. Uh, lacrosse and hockey, they have goal posts. So, uh, and the game, Jada Goha, has goal posts too. And they're about four or five feet high and about eight feet apart. And, and uh, you can have more than two teams. You could have three or four teams. And, and usually it takes a whole weekend. And, and sometimes you can go more than one weekend and it's played in the winter time. And uh, you see which team can fill up the most goal posts with stove wood, firewood. And whatever team wins has the most goal posts filled up with firewood. Uh, you get a traditional meal, corn soup, cornbread, scone. And I said, we can play that every winter right here at my house. And we'll put the goalpost right by my back door there. And, and, uh, but none of them want to go, none of them after they find out that uh, Jada Goha translates, go get wood, none of them want to play. <laughs> Um, I used to talk a lot of the old guys, both longhouse and, and Mohawk workers, and, and um, <clears throat> sometimes those two groups didn't see eye to eye, and, and, I, and they had different of opinions, but yet I learned from both of them, uh, and I took the good from both of them, like I used to visit the like, uh, old Sid General, um, and, and uh, old Mel Squire, and them, and, and uh, I learned from both of them, and just kind of, uh, but the stories, um, and then the longhouse, it's, it's good, and then uh, they retain, I think if it wasn't for the longhouse people, we wouldn't have a culture today, because they, they have saved a lot of the, the teachings, the legends, and everything, and, and um, so I, I uh, viewed it as, a, even though the Mohawk workers, they didn't have a longhouse, House, but yet they were still really proud of, of uh, their culture and, 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 and had a different perspective on it. So I, I just utilized, uh, the far as the stories go, so it, it, it's, it's uh, just mostly the religions, like the, the creation story and, and the, the great law of peace and that. And, and again, everybody has their own interpretations and then I kind of um, um, I respect everybody's opinion you know whatever it is uh, uh, because I, I grew up in the church but yet yeah, um, um, when uh, when I got older I sort of, sort of left the church and started to study more of the, the native ways and, and, um, um, but yet I, 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 I grew up with uh, gospel Christian music and that's still I still love that I still so, so it's a blend of different cultures, uh, both Christian and, and what, that I get a lot of pleasure out of it and, 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 and satisfaction out of it from um, hearing both, both of them and, and I take the good from both of them. And, and so that, that gives me uh, a lot of uh, a satisfaction in, in life. Uh, and, and so as far as the stories go, I'd have to really think about it. Uh, think about, uh, 
a lot of times I forget things and, and get old and, and so, um, yeah, sometimes I'll have to sit down and, and think about it. <laughs> I, I would uh, tell them, you know, to, to be proud of that we're Native, like uh, <clears throat> one time I was telling people that, well today when you talk, say, to non-Native people, as soon as you start telling them about uh, your beliefs uh, that, that um, uh, we have nations, like Mohawk Nation, uh, Cuba, and all of the nations, uh, they, some of them perceive that as you being um, against, say, for instance, Canada or, or the United States, that uh, you're anti-government, anti but really uh, this is in our culture. This is what we, we are, what we were. It's just like the maple tree, the hickory tree. They, they were, they grow here. And that's just the way Native people are. This is where we come from, the land. The, 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 we're like the hickory tree and the maple tree. Uh, no palm trees grow here, but, but we as Native people in North America, uh, and, and I tell the younger generation to have pride in, in that, that culture because that's old. That, that goes back thousands and thousands of years old. Just like the maple tree and, and the pine tree and the hickory tree. That's like us. We, we, um, we belong here. Uh, this is where the Great Spirit put us in, in these lands. And, and we should be really proud of it and, and find the uh, uh, strength and the, uh, the, the, the it's genetic. You know, today you hear a lot of, about genetic and genes and and, um, um, uh, and that's us. So we have the, the, the ties to the land, to the water, to the air. And, and today I think we need that more than ever today uh, to, to, to um, protect that and, and to, yeah, at the same time, we have to survive in a world of technology, uh, industry. Um, I see a lot of them on uh, AP10, like uh, the news, a lot of uh, natives way up in the northern areas and and uh, they say we want jobs because we, we live in poverty. We want jobs. We want our people to be working. But yet, when you look at that, that's like a double-edged sword. These jobs in industry are also just like us uh, 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 Iroquois people. We are iron workers. We're, we're real known for our iron working skills. Going to New York City, and all. I was an iron worker myself. And really, when you look at that, um, we were contributing to the destruction of Mother Earth. But yet, we had to do that in order to live, in order to get uh, money, which, which we, we don't hunt and trap anymore for a living. We, we deal with money. And so we had to do that in order to buy clothes for our kids, send our kids to school, buy homes, buy cars. Uh, and, and we were caught in two worlds. We were caught in our traditional beliefs, and then on the opposite side was a world of business and technology. And, and how do we survive today? Uh, poverty, uh, there's a lot of bad things in poverty, like social issues, like uh, uh, alcoholism, and drugs, and, and all kinds of uh, uh, things that aren't good. And, and yet, when we rise out of poverty, and, and we become, um, and it's been proven, uh, studies have shown that people that do know how to survive, <coughs> live a healthier life in the body, mind, and spirit. And so I, I think now we have to learn how to go to school and balance, balance these two things, this world that we come from, that we were born in, like, like, like our culture. And yet we have to learn how to live today, too, with technology, like we use a lot of technology. We have oil and, and our gas to heat our homes. We all drive cars. But yet we have to, we have to now start thinking about the balance of, of balances with nature. And in my work, I do a lot of uh, work in my poverty for, for businesses and companies. Um, and, and they are clients of mine. And, and that's what I stress, that, that we can balance uh, 
technology industry, we'd be happy to now start looking after nature also because uh, if we don't have any clean water to drink, uh, pure air to, to breathe, and that, that would be the end of humanity. And, and so I, I would uh, urge the young people to, to go as far as you can in school and learn technology and then turn and use it. Use technology to fix things like purify water. And, and is there a better way? Is there a better way to, to live with all these things around us? In every little town and city, you see thriving uh, uh, um, subdivisions and all that. And you can, we can't stop that. We can't stop it now and because the world uh, population is increasing. And these people all need homes to, to live in. And, but yet at the same time, we can blend that with our cultural teachings. We, we can have the best of both worlds. And, and I think now society, some people, not all people, are starting to realize that uh, and, and they're starting to uh, want to know uh, what the Indians, Native people, believe in, what, what they thought of all these things, because they can see the need to, to, to uh, uh, keep nature uh, as, as pristine as, as we can. And, uh, so it's an interest. I would urge the young people to use uh, Retain uh, your identity, your native identity, your teachings your, from, uh, from uh, uh, generations. Yet yeah, blend the wisdom, blend it with intelligence. Bring the two together. And, 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 and uh, native people, they say, are growing. They're growing. Uh, uh, we have the biggest population growth of any culture, of any nationality. And, and so there's this great. Uh, uh, all in one place. Uh, we can, as Native people, we can bring this all together to, to help not only ourselves, but all humanity, um, uh, everybody of the world. And, and uh, so I, I, I hope that happens. <laughs> when you go back, um, um, when our uh, Native kids went to school, the, English, the teachers were all from England, and they were uh, they could not pronounce the Indian names, and so the teacher, who was usually English, this is going back uh, four or five generations, would uh, give, uh, they'd say, okay, you you six kids, you you will now become Smith. You, you uh, six over here, you will become Hill. And you, and then the Indian Affairs, uh, the government uh, took up on that also. Like my native name that I got in the Chiga Longhouse is Standing Sky, or the Sky is Standing, and in, in, in the Cayuga, where I got it in the Chiga Longhouse, it's Gyanpeet, but in Mohawk, it's Gatlunya Day, and, and um, so my uncle, Bill uh, Smith, he told me that our sort of our family name going way back was Singing Robin, and, and um, so my name today, instead of Steve Smith, would be Gahunya De Chigogo. Gahunya De Standing Sky Chigogo, maybe like a last name, uh, with a singing robin. It's all related to the sky, where some people, their names relate to the earth, the, the ground, uh, the trees, and some is the sky. Some on my, my wife's side, their, their names come from the water. They, they all have water names, and, and some have flower names. And, and, uh, so my father, he was very adamant about, and this is going back to the 50s, of bringing a lot of this stuff back, because that was still the era of the residential school, where the government imposed, um, uh, in like, um, uh, um, a while back, one of the prime ministers said they were trying to beat the Indian out of the Indians. And so we had to follow rules and regulations and, and all kinds of things that really weren't inherently ours. They were uh, um, sort of uh, imposed upon us. And, and, and we had to adapt and, and through the residential schools. It was a, a terrible blunder. It uh, destroyed us. And, and, uh, 
So now we would struggle to get back. And my dad in the 50s was, uh, he kind of uh, rocked the boat or kind of went against him in the players and he started teaching in the public school, like the native language. He had a lady called Frances Law, who was a young girl. Her mother, Vina Law, taught Mohawk. And he, he'd have uh, Frances come in and teach us like Mohawk. Uh, I can always remember her ta uh, telling a story about in Mohawk of uh, the cricket, Chalik Chalik, his, his cricket. And, and, um, and he'd take us on nature walks and, and to look at, study plants and trees. And, and, and when the spring we'd go around, around the flats where the cart would come up and the, and the fish. And, and as a child, and that is, is natural to us as Native people. We, we uh, want to, to be part of that instinctively. Uh, yet at the same time, we had to learn mathematics and, and science and history and all of the academic things, which is good too, uh, because my father was bringing in both, both uh, in sports. He, he was a great sports figure. He wanted uh, us to play sports and lacrosse, and he started minor hockey and on the reserve, and, and, and he always supported anything that was sports or cultural. In uh, Indian Affairs was kind of against that, and they kind of reprimanded him uh, a couple of times, and he didn't really, uh, he didn't really care, he just kept uh, doing it, because again, this is in the late 50s, when, when those things where the government was frowned upon, but it really kept going, and, and so my mother, she, uh, um, uh, did pottery, and she, she was, uh, her brother was Tonto, Jay Silverheels, and, and uh, my mother would always tell me stories about, about her and my dad, too, about our old culture, our old people, um, like my Uncle Jay, uh, he, uh, this is going back to the 50s again, when, when he was Tonto and a Lone Ranger, uh, he had to play a stereotypical role, like, like Tondo says, mm -hmm. he was all be talking that. And at that time, all ethnic uh, people talked that, that uh, Hollywood made him talk like that, uh, used broken English, they like were uh, stupid or dumb. And, and uh, he never liked that. Like, black people had to talk in, in, in their way. And, Chinese people, uh, ethnic people, had to say, you like your soupy? And, and, and uh, they seemed to uh, make them inferior. So my uncle, after the Lone Ranger series was over, and Uncle Jay Tonto, Jay Silverheels, he started an Indian acting school to, to foster pride in Native people. He wanted Hollywood to see that we were a spiritual people that we had uh, uh, looked after the land, uh, that, that we had a lot of really good, wonderful uh, things in our life, our traditional life. But Hollywood didn't want that at that time. And so they ostracized him. They, they, they wouldn't have anything to do with him. And so he, he, he uh, didn't get parts. But in the late 60s, when the hippie movement came into effect, um, and uh, well, hippies started uh, copying the Indian people with long hair and, and uh, bandanas and living a life of freedom. Uh, Hollywood seen there was money to be made in that, and so they, they start showing uh, uh, that side of the Indian people. But my uncle, was, he was left out of that. He was ostracized from that because he challenged Hollywood. And uh, men like uh, Chief Dan George uh, got parts, and Chief Dan George was a wonderful man. He, he was a beautiful, handsome-looking native, and he was a very highly spiritual man, which is good. And and uh, so so my uncle paid a price. Uh, nobody knows too much about that for for making uh, the Indian people uh, positive uh, role models. And and uh, so I come from a, a family that was really instilled in pride, even though. My father went to church, uh, and, and yet at the same time, he would have uh, uh, um, people like old Eskahe General and his sisters come in, and wife and sister, and do the feasts for us. So, so we lived both, both uh, 
Christian and uh, uh, Longhouse. Uh, we, we got we took the, the beauty of both of them, and, and uh, I'm I'm glad in a way I can I can uh, uh, still have a lot of those um, like um, Carson's music uh, reminds me uh, a lot of that, and and because uh, we can we're proud of our native culture yet yet we have influences of. of other cultures, and we can put all of those things in a good way, and and we can get back and be on a good path, a good people, uh, um, um, strong people, and, and we use whatever is there, if it makes you strong, a good person, by all means use it, and and and, uh, and it'll build your character, and um, uh, uh, build you to be good good people. And, and uh, a, very, a lot of human uh, humanitarian attributes. And, and so it's all really good. Mm -hmm. Nations that are different, yet they're united as one. They're, they're one. And yet they retain their own individuality. They're, 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 uh, and they respect each other. But the United States, one time I was down, my, well, my family and I, we went down to... Uh, that place where the Mohawk Valley, where the Mohawks lived. And there's a, a river there uh, coming, it runs into the Mohawk River. And it's a place called the pot that washes itself. And that's sort of the birthplace uh, all through there of, of uh, the Iroquois Confederacy. And the United States copied that system. And yet there's not a plaque there at that place to acknowledge that. Uh, there's the Iroquois Museum, well, and they do a good job, as, as Schoharie, they do a good job of getting us recognized as, as uh, being uh, founders, really founders of, of this great system of freedom and democracy, responsible freedom. People say, well, as soon as you have freedom, you can do whatever you want, but we, have, we practice responsible freedom. We were free, but yet we weren't free to, to do bad or to hurt people. Um, and so that was the best way. That's what our natives all over North America had that, that, that we were, um, um, uh, we, we enjoyed the freedom, but we had, the, we, with that, we blended the great reverence and respect for, for the land that we lived in and all of our natural surroundings. and. and that was the best life you, you could possibly want. That, that's why um, people work all year just so that they could live uh, for two weeks like an Indian on, on the lake, you know, and enjoying nature. And yet they only get to do that for two weeks. <laughs> we, we did it all the time. And, and um, so, so, so um, um, yeah, um, and I forgot what your question was. <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> yeah, we were just talking about some of the older people in, in the community. That, that, uh, Carson and I were talking about uh, people that we knew, old timers, when we were young. And then he would go and talk to them, and I would go and talk to some of them. And uh, uh, one time we went to talk to this elderly gentleman named Norman General. He lived on... on uh, Frog Pond, and, and he lived in an old stone house there. And I can't, I, I remember whether, I can't remember whether he had a family or not, but he was always alone. And he was from the old school. And um, I wanted to ask him what about native culture and all that. And I was like, uh, me and my wife, we were like uh, young then, and we were searching to find, trying to find our, our native identity. And, and he was, um, he, he um, very adamantly um, started to um, tell what, what he knew. And he said, that day is coming when uh, his prophecies told us where there will be giant monsters coming and, and, and they'll kill people. And, and, um, and my wife and I thought, well, we, we can't really uh, believe that, that there's big giant monsters <laughs> coming. But really, in one way, there is monsters, and that, that's pollution, and that's uh, uh, destruction of, of, of uh, the nat natural way. So in one way, he was right, only he used different phrases. He phrased it differently. 
and and uh, so a lot of the, these old old people, you know, they they um, were, were foretold in their their prophecies and that of of um, things that were coming. And I used to like to go and listen to a lot of them, talk to them, and and um, I used to listen to both Longhouse and and old Mohawk workers, and and yet. Um, uh, they, they had differences and yet they had a lot of similarities they could uh, whenever something was bad uh, like in, uh, in 1959 when uh, the um, RCMP uh, came to the council house and, and um, uh, took over kicked all uh, the people the Mohawk workers and uh, um, um, the, um, the, the longhouse people were united and, and uh, so I didn't want the division. I didn't want to be divided. And, and so I just learned from both of them what, what I took from both of them, things that would help me in my life. And, and I didn't want uh, any part of the, the division part. And, and uh, so, so, so I, I got uh, um, uh, any culture, I, I take the good out of it, no matter what culture it is, uh, like... Um, in the old way, they say you would add rafters to your longhouse. That means make your longhouse bigger and accommodate uh, more understanding and more um, um, good things. And, and so that's, that's what I've done. No matter what culture it is, whether it's Buddhism or, or Hindu or Jewish or Christian, I, I take the good uh, out of everyone and, and I add to that, to my own my own beliefs and, and I find it, get, it helps me you know where some people won't do that they'll say well that's not our way and I understand that too I you know I respect that and, and um, I think in one way we live in a really good time because we can see so many cultures that we even a lot of these cultures uh, like the um, European culture uh, brought about a lot of destructive things to our to North America um, I, I just look at it, say, do you have anything that's good? <laughs> and I, and I, I take that and, 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 and um, use that uh, to, to strengthen my own life, my own give, bring me uh, um, well-being, mind, body, and spirit. And, and um, just like balance, I tell the young people to balance uh, wisdom with, with intelligence. Usually the thing intelligence is like scientific but yet it, it can be uh, used today in a good way too. And, and, and uh, so it's, it's all a balance of, of everything. One, one time I was talking to uh, this young guy and he says he doesn't uh, go to the longhouse. He doesn't go to the church. He don't support the Confederacy and he don't support the band council. He says, so who speaks for me? Mm -hmm. What would be your opinion on that? <clears throat> yeah, I, I think again that goes back to <clears throat> a human being. I, I know, I, I'm in one way. I'm kind of like that. Um, uh, or long as we know within our own, our own body, mind, and spirit that we're content and we're good people. Um, it's it's just like um, um, the animals, uh, birds, and the animals. If you look at the, say for example, the Canada geese, they all follow um, natural law. They uh, migrate, like the geese are starting but, uh, to come back. They, they know uh, they'll fly uh, in, in the summer, they'll fly uh, to the north and then they'll come back. And they do that by instinct. Uh, there's no leader. There's no one goose that says to all the other geese, okay, you follow me, I'm the leader. Um, because when the leader dies, uh, you must have, if all of them grew up as leaders, then when that one leader dies, you still have uh, um, the ability to, to be, uh, um, have guidance. And so in nature, in, in animals, we see where there is no leader. No one animal is designated as a leader. Like in deer, for example, the male deer, buck is always the, the dominant one. They, 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 they fight for who is, who is the dominant one to breed the, the herd. And, and again, that's for strength, to, to be, be strong. That's in the animal kingdom. 
but but in also in, in uh, human beings we can uh, use um, our instinct but if we have the ability to reason that means we can reason just like in the confederacy the circle wampum belt uh, the, of uh, the 52 chiefs going around uh, uh, on the outer circle connected by strings and, and, and you see that that's an old symbol used in many cultures where you see circles and they're connected like most people say they're connected by spokes like a bicycle wheel and that symbolizes um, individuality and uh, equality that we're all equal I can go to somebody else's house who may be a, a different nationality but yet I can still live in peace with them and respect there and, and hopefully they would do the same to me and, and um, so, so again you have a system that, that because we can reason uh, we're supposed to use sound in, uh, in the old uh, confederacy under the tree of peace they said the Diganawida or the peacemaker said to use sound reasoning that means in one way that could be intelligence and yet um, I'll, I'll blend it with a wisdom based on uh, then we blend that with our genetic uh, our instinctive but what we do it and, and you'll find that we uh, uh, nowadays in, in history books you see a lot of, of where they say oh this nation fought that nation uh, this nation wiped out that nation if you ever watch any of these shows on TV the uh, European Western civilization cannot understand like when they talk about the Aztec and the Mayan, everything is based on power, uh, most powerful. Domination, dominate. One, um, and I, I myself, I don't believe that we had that, where we would kill little children and sacrifice them. Uh, that, that doesn't fit into our, uh, our um, uh, instinctive love for, for people and, and for life. Um, like they say, history books say, oh, well, the Iroquois fought the Ojibwe and the Algonquin. Maybe, maybe we did after the Europeans came and influenced us to, to do that. Uh, but I cannot picture, a, a, say, a Mohawk grandmother saying to her children, now you go and kill those Ojibwe people, or a, an Ojibwe woman saying, now you go and kill our Ojibwe elders. Now you go and kill those Mohawk. That we, we couldn't do that. We, we didn't do that. But it's history books. We didn't write the history books. And history means his, his story, <laughs> not ours. And, and so, so I, I, if we follow instinct, you know, uh, whether it's a, not a structured religion, an organized religion, as long as we follow instinctively what we feel, and when we go back to humanity, like in, uh, they say, ongohongwe, means real people, ongohongwe. That means we, we are, we're real human beings, that, that we, and, and every, almost every native culture in North America, they have a, a, the same thing, only in their own language. And that, that means we have the ability, and I think it even mentions that in the Bible, where, where human, mankind, uh, is, is uh, um, we, we have that ability to look after, like, like take for example Christianity. Um, I was raised in the Anglican church and, uh, and there's still a lot of good teachings in, in the church, um, but then there's a lot of things I can't agree with either. So I'm able to just within my own self pick and choose what, what uh, is logical, what is rational to me. Uh, and, and, and it suits me fine, and I, but at the same time I respect all the other other religions. Uh, you, you take some families um, have been helped by, by becoming uh, 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 religious, and that's helped them. Maybe, they're, maybe they fought uh, alcoholism or, or uh, gross dysfunction within their own families and they wanted to get out of that and they grasp religion well then if it's helped them then that's good you can't uh, say it's not good whatever you know, some a lot of people grasp the native way of uh, young children are going back to learning the, the dances and the powwow making costumes and trying to learn a language that's all good uh, we can um, 
and, and um, we can all get along as one. I, I get a lot of people, I meet a lot of people from different cultures and, and I try to learn, take, get some wisdom from each one of them. And, and it's so, I enjoy now, all people, every person has a story. Every person has a story. Um, one time I was in Toronto, <clears throat> driving down one of the streets and there was traffic time, stop and go bumper to bumper. You'd go four car lengths and then stop and go another, waiting for the light to change. And I looked to the side, to, to my, my right side, and there was an Indian boy. And he was maybe in his 20s and he was walking down the street and he was talking to the walls and waving his hands around and hollering. And then I'd drive up three or four car lengths and stop again and, and he'd catch up to me and he was doing the same thing. And that made me think, <clears throat> what, what did this boy go through to make him like that? What, what happened to him? He was born a pure, um, innocent child, uh, and yet something happened to him to make him dysfunctional. And 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 there's um, a lot of our people have, have gone through that, and 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 so if we follow our instinct, our, our what what's within us, we can gradually, I think, get back. Some people may grasp religion. Some people may grasp uh, um, and say, well, I'm Indian because I taught the language. And another person, well, I'm Indian because I, I can make uh, native costumes. Or, or I'm Indian because I, I started a garden. And this is all good. It's all, all good. We're all searching and looking for and take whatever we need to, to, to bring us back to our, our, the strength of our culture. Mm-hmm.